Hey guys, it's Susie live from Dunkin' Donuts. I would be at Wendy's, but the sweet tea and the french fries are too hard to resist. And there are no plugs there. So anyway, in tonight's video, we're going to talk about three ways if you want to share Canvas content either for your own posterity later or so people can edit or so people can just look but not touch. I've got three ways that you can share Canvas content, so stay tuned. Okay, this way I'm about to show you, I want you to imagine that you're going to the copy machine and you want to say, you can have a copy of my course, but do not change anything about it. <laughs> They're going to have their own copy. They're not going to touch anything. And you can share either a whole course or a piece of it. So I'm in my Canvas for Littles course, which I have already shared to the Commons. You're going to click Settings. And then right at the top, uh, top corner, Share to Commons. It will share the whole course. When you do that, it'll have you fill out some things, pick an image. Um, but that's sharing a whole copy of the course as if you had taken that person to the copy machine and said, hey, here's my whole ninth grade lit notebook or whatever. If you want to share just a module from a course, you can go into Modules. And you can click the three dots at the top of that module. And then you can also say Share That to Commons. So you don't just have to share a whole course. You can share pieces throughout. You will find that Share to Commons button in different places in Canvas. Again, that is a here's a copy, but don't touch mine. Let's talk about some other solutions. The second way you can share course content is by adding people. And now when you add people, you are giving them rights to do certain things in your course. Now, the, the rights do vary. I'm in Canvas free, so I'm probably not going to have a very good example here. But um, like I invited my husband, he does not give a rip. I'm sure I was practicing something. <laughs> But you can add people as students or teachers or teacher assistants. Like you'll see the different options here and you can go to the Canvas guides and explore what those mean. But if I make somebody a teacher in my course, then they are able to come in and do the same things I do as a teacher. Some of these roles may be limited by your district or by your school, so just check those out. But if you wanna invite somebody, you just go to plus people. Um, you can search them in different ways, like email address. I know that in my former school district, we had to use their SIS ID, so that would have been like their, their number. Um, but you can go down and you can search for them by different ways. And then as you search, you give them whatever role you want them to have. And you can also say they can only interact with people in their particular section if you have a course with sections, okay? So that's a way that you can give people editing rights in your course, for better or for worse, you decide. Now this third sharing option I have used for myself when I want a backup of a course or when I know I want to pull it into a different domain. So for example, I support a lot of different districts in Canvas. So if I know I'm going to be going to a California school district or to a, a Missouri school district or whatever, and I want to pull in the same course, not necessarily um, you know, tweak my master, but have a copy that I can pull into their instance, change anything I want to change and it won't affect my master. Um, or if I want to give these files to somebody else, I just, I can go to what's called export course content. It pulls in like a particular package. Let me show you what they look like. So these are not like files you can use as a PDF or anything like that. They have this IMSCC, excuse me as you hear the grinding of coffee. They have this IMSCC, which is, um, you know, only going to import and export from Canvas, but it's something that you can easily pull in. So when you want to get that again, you go to your dashboard. And I say get because I'm from the South. <laughs> but you go to your dashboard, you go to start a new course. Or if you're going to pull it into an existing course, I do not recommend that at all. But I'm going to say delete later. Okay. Create course. And both of these, again, are in settings. So I go to settings and I can import course content and I will pull whatever that, it's called a Canvas course export package. So I'll pull that, find where it's saved. Again, mine's in my uh, Canvas file. Give me a minute to find that. Okay, so I've chosen the file. It'll ask me if I want all content or uh, specific. It's maybe a good idea just to look at specific anyway, so it'll show you what's in there. And then so, so, so important, especially if you're going to import from a previous year or into a different student group from a course you already have, adjust events and due dates. If your dates are from last year or from last semester, it will lock down assignments if you don't change those dates. So to be safe, I just usually remove dates and then I go back in and as I use an assignment, as I publish it or whatever, then I go through and add that date. You wanna have dates, but you want them to be current so that nothing gets locked down. So again, that's just, you can screenshot this or whatever for what I did to pull that content back in. I also, when I changed school districts, pause. 
I made myself exports of any files to which I knew I would want to refer later, okay? So I just have them all in one folder called Course Exports and I can pull them in and then add more to it as I go. So I hope these three tips for sharing content were helpful. I would love to hear down below if they were. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you wanna gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.